Hi Ellen, thanks for joining us today. Hey. Um, yeah. Uh, so one of the things, <laughs> the way we're starting off these videos is to ask people to introduce themselves, uh, who they are and tell us a little bit about their work. Um, so maybe you'd like to do that? Yeah, sure. Um, okay, I'm Ellen Evans and I am a documentary filmmaker. Uh, I've recently, shall I continue? Me too, yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've, I've recently completed a film called Motherland, uh, which is, um, is due for release on iTunes and Amazon Prime and BFI player incurs on home cinema on the 1st of June. Um, and the film was made as part of the Uncertain Kingdom uh, anthology, which is basically a collection of 20 short films um, about issues in the UK today. Um, and yeah, and I also teach at university, so. Amazing. So I mean, yeah. would you mind telling us a little bit more about this upcoming film about Motherland? Because I understand it took, um, you know, it t takes a, a certain amount of kind of research um, and then you travel to do the recording for it. Um, so yeah, could we hear a little bit more about Motherland? Was, yeah, okay. So, um, okay, so The Uncertain Kingdom is, um, it's basically an anthology of short films which um, are supposed to collectively paint a portrait of um, the United Kingdom in this time of great uncertainty. Um, it was commissioned just as Brexit was happening. Um, so the idea was, yeah, I think that the, the uncertainty element was supposed to tie in with Brexit. And um, we were all given free reign to explore issues that we thought um, were particularly pertinent. And um, basically, we thought it'd be interesting to look at the UK from the perspective of um, another country, you know, in, the, in this case, Jamaica, um, and explore, you know, obviously it touches on colonialism, but, you know, it primarily is um, concerned with um, issues of uh, deportation um, in the light of the Windrush scandal. So the film isn't about Windrush itself, it's actually um, primarily about the experiences of young men who've been deported following prison sentences. Um, but there's, you know, th there's a Windrush story kind of tied into it. So yeah, it's, um, it's exploring three narratives. So two young men and then a man from an older generation um, who was caught up in the Windrush scandal. I feel like I've explained it extremely badly. Can you just ask questions to help me clarify? Of course, absolutely. No, I mean, we'd love to hear, to hear more yeah. about the film. So your, your focus is, is on Jamaica and sort mm. of, um, uh, and looking at these young men's experience out there. I mean, yeah, and you... kind of through that, I want to, you know, also explore Britain's relationship with Jamaica, right? So, um, yeah, sorry, carry on. No, I no, I was just going to ask, you know, how did you come to, when you're given a, a kind of a large brief like that, and, and yeah. the overarching title is The Uncertain Kingdom, how do you go mm. about pinpointing what story is that you wanted to tell, and what was it that kind of that led you to to this kind of lens on that um, banner? Yeah. Okay, so um, how do I answer this succinctly? So originally the film wasn't going to be about, um, you know, it wasn't going to be specifically located in Jamaica. Um, it was actually going to be about um, detention, right? So immigration detention. Um, so before I started making documentaries, I was an immigration caseworker. So, um, I worked for a Labour MP um, and I um, was often, uh, how do I say this, sort of like not representing people because that's what lawyers do, but I was sort of assisting people in their representations against the Home Office. Mm -hmm. um, so often, you know, writing letters in support of people who are, who are um, facing detention or who are fighting deportation and that kind of thing. So I've, I've been aware of this issue for um, many years and I've always wanted to make a documentary about it. So when the Uncertain Kingdom commission happened, I originally wanted to make a film about the uncertainty of living in um, uh, either in detention or um, awaiting deportation. Um, 
so that was the original starting point of the film. And then basically what happened is in our research, or in, yeah, I got very, um, I was uh, working with this organization in Jamaica um, called the National Organization for Deported Migrants. Um, and what I realized was, was, whilst I was finding it very difficult to um, find an active case in the UK, um, I realized that I could make this film like a little bit further down the timeline. So instead of making it about someone who was facing deportation, make it about people who have already been deported. Um, so I managed to convince my producer that we should go to Jamaica. <laughs> we had an absolutely shoestring budget as well. So um, it was kind of nuts um, because we had 10,000 pounds to make the film, which sounds like a lot of money, but films are really expensive and it's actually not very much at all. So yeah, we went to Jamaica for a month to make the film. Well, I'm really looking forward to that um, coming out the 1st of June, right? Yeah, I know. I did my plug so hard at the beginning. Maybe you should cut that. It was a bit uh, eager. I know, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should release this film on the 1st of June and then it will, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it can uh, tie in. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, I guess, uh, so you mentioned that you you were, before you were doing uh, documentary filmmaking full time, you, you worked as an immigration caseworker. And I guess... Yeah. And I, I mean, I'm kind of interested broadly, I guess the broad classic question is how did you get into documentary mm. filmmaking, you know? But, but along with that, I'm, I'm interested in how the kind of work that you're doing and the, the, the film that you just described there might, it, it is itself a kind of form of advocacy or assistance? I mean, do you see the, what do you see the yeah. work that, that that kind of film is doing? And is that connected in some way to, to your role as uh, assisting people in their struggles here? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, I, the film is definitely, um, you know, it's, it is a kind of campaign film. I'm hesitating because it's also quite slow. <laughs> um, it's a very slow kind of poetic film in a way. Um, so it doesn't have the usual aesthetics of a kind of campaign documentary, but in heart, in, you know, at its heart it is um and yeah i mean i i yeah i started um i started making documentaries because my work as a caseworker was um giving me access to stories that i wanted to tell right so i was a caseworker and i was you know I think I was, I was 21 and I, I was kind of a very mediocre caseworker, right? So I started doing casework, casework because when I left university, I was obsessed with this idea of doing something like useful. I wanted to be like very useful in society. Um, and even though I'd actually been very sort of arty my whole life, I, I left university and I was absolutely um, determined to like make a difference. Um, and I thought I wanted to be a human rights lawyer. So for me, casework was like a way of sort of testing the waters with, you know, le sort of working with legal cases. And the idea was I was going to do some casework and then go and train as a lawyer, you know, take, do an MA in law, whatever they do. Um, and conversion, a law conversion. Um, and I was, so I was doing my casework and I was coming across all these really interesting stories and I was, you know, I was okay. I was, you know, doing the work, but I wasn't, uh, what do you call it, excelling <laughs> in this, um, in this role. Uh, but it made me realize that, you know, I wanted to tell stories really. So I, I left um, the casework job and I, I did an MA, but it wasn't in law, it was in documentary filmmaking and um you know at first I I thought that I would I had quite a dry conception of documentary and I thought again I was still obsessed with trying to be useful um and so I was like okay well I'll do this MA and then you know I, I'll get to work on panorama or something you know I really wanted to work on kind of um current affairs but when I was doing my MA I was lucky enough to um 
you know, it basically opened my eyes to kind of like what documentary is and, you know, uh, different forms of documentary. And um, yeah, it was when I was doing the course, I realized, you know, I wanted to make my own films and, you know, not just kind of do pizzas for Panorama. No, I mean, that would still be great, not to shit on Panorama. I mean, th those, there were sort of four words jumping out at me there that I'm, that I think are really interesting. They actually speak to some of what other people have said um, in the conversations we've been having uh, here on A Bit Lit. Um, and that's particularly surrounding, so we've had a lot of academics um, come on, um, and mm -hmm. uh, a number have been talking about the archive or this idea of the archive and the past. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's a clear connection there with um, the work that you're doing in the present as a documentary filmmaker, because we, we talk about the documents of the past and you're sort of collating them into, I guess, a, I guess a present archive. And one of the things yeah. that, that's really leapt out and that people have talked about um, is this, this idea of story and storytelling, which is really deeply connected to historical interest in the past. Um, yeah. so, so that role of s story and how that connects to, to documentary filmmaking, I'd love to hear maybe a little bit more about that. Um, I know, for instance, that you, you, um, you did some work with the BFI on a, on a programme called Made, Made of Truth. Made of Truth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We stre I really stretched the, uh, <laughs> the parameters on that one. Oh, I love uh, that. Yeah, I mean, it was called Made of Truth and we really ran with that idea. Um, and I actually made a docudrama. So it was something that kind of sits between fact and fiction, um, just to see what that would be like. And um, sorry, I've completely lost the, the questions. What was the question? Yeah, Storytelling so and documentary. Well, I mean, I, just um, that sort of relationship between what we think of as documentary filmmaking and what mm. some people's uh, you know assumptions might be about that, but how closely connected it is to story and what role story plays in telling people's truths or telling people's stories. Um, so mm. that question of narrative, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, do, you know, obviously documentary is a form of storytelling. Um, and... I don't know, I feel like I've got a few quite disparate thoughts on this. Um, I think, first of all, there's a kind of um, misconception sometimes about what documentary is and people either expect it to be simply journalism, right? And I, for me, like documentary film is, is not journalism. Um, you know, it's, it's like, there has to be a reason you've made it into a film rather than just had it in an article. You know, you're, you're really serving a different purpose when you work in film. Um, and so that's like one issue. Um, and then there's another misconception, which is that, um, you know, documentaries are factually correct or that they should be factually correct, right? I think documentaries are there to tell truths about the world, right? Um, but as, what's his name, Flannity, uh, do you know who I'm talking about? No, no, no. documentary maker. Um, uh, was somebody called Flannity. Um, I can't remember his first name, so that's the second name. Um, and he called documentary the creative treatment of reality, right? Um, and it's the creative, you know, and, and that's a really important kind of principle that as soon as you are you know putting a film together you are manipulating like the exact record of events it's just inevitable right you play around with time and you play around with what's in the frame and you know it's it's just a natural kind of byproduct you can't really get around that and in fact i don't think you'd want to watch a film that was just like a faithful representation of reality as it unfolds because um well it, that Maybe in some avant-garde sense, it could be interesting, but to, to watch it would be incredibly dull. So I mean, in that sense, it's, it's, exa it's an exact parallel to history because you're not, historians aren't writing, um, you know, a, a faithful representation of the past. In those yeah, it's, it's always an interpretation, right? Mm. Yeah, and documentary filmmakers are the same, right? So they are, um, but what they're trying to do, they, they always feel like they're trying to tell the truth. And I feel that as well, you know, I kind of uh, legitimate legitimate my 
um, choices because as long as they're sort of faithful to what I believe to be the truth and the truth that I want to tell, then it's, <laughs> maybe it's okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, you know, people are often, uh, people get up in arms about that kind of thing, you know, like when they feel that um, things are not factually kind of correct. Mm. Um, I mean, how, so you sort of mentioned about being playful with form um, earlier mm. and, uh, you know, and, and I guess slowness is also a part of form. I mean, what sort mm. of, um, in terms of not just uh, providing a straight filming of the world, a kind of live film, there, there's craft going into it. What, what, what is it about form that interests you, you that you can do within um, documentary filmmaking? How can you play around with form and what do you do? To... What do I do? Um, hmm, that's a really hard question. I think, yeah. I, I think it's hard for me to say because I, I, I feel like my films are so different. Um, in a way, I wish I had a more coherent, you know, singular form that I was like interested in pursuing, but they really differ quite wildly. Um, kind of weather, and in, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, you know, I'm absolutely, I'm still working it out. And I think, I, I hope that um, as I continue working, I'll develop a more kind of coherent aesthetic or something that I want to sort of pursue. But at the moment, you know, it's like the, the subject comes first and then <clears throat> I kind of um, think of a form that would be appropriate for that, right? Mm. Um, so Motherland is a very, in some ways quite a slow film and there's a definite um, you know, because we, we're telling the stories of people who um, have had to spend so much of their life waiting. Um, and it's also, there were some like deliberate choices with framing, for example, you know, to, um, it's quite strange when you watch it because the inter there are interviews, right? So there are traditional documentary sit down interviews. So there's testimony. However, they're shot in a very unusual way. So often the contributor sits really small in the screen. So you'll have a frame like this, quite useful being in a box for talking about framing. Um, and the contributor, like, instead of, so if you imagine like this, let me, wait, let me try and get this into like a traditional documentary. This is like, this is like what they call like a talking head. Mm -hmm. So this is your like bread and butter kind of like documentary thing, but maybe it's like at a better angle, right? But anyway, it's kind of like this. And then the way we have it is everybody's sat. First of all, you see like their whole thick figure and then they're sat maybe like this big in one corner. Mm -hmm. So there's just so much space around them and it looks quite strange. <laughs> but um, the reason for it was that, you know, um, the environment in which they're in um, was, uh, you know, is so much a part of the film. It's about people being, um, ha li living in a place that they've never lived before, or they, you know, they don't really remember living um, and being kind of lost in that world. So that's why we kind of framed it up like that. So they're constantly kind of lost in, in the frame. Mm. So that was a bit eccentric. But, no, um... that's really fascinating <laughs> um, to, to, to hear. And I think, and I think you're right, you know, we're so used to, or I, I at least am so <laughs> used to particular types of documentary. Um, th those yeah. ones that are, well, I guess the ones that are perhaps more readily available or, or certainly... Yeah, yeah, or the, like Netflix shit. <laughs> but exactly, exactly. Or, or, or even BBC4 kind of talking heads, um, talking yeah. heads those, you know, that sort of thing. Um, mm. I mean, you know, in, in that sense, documentary is kind of having a, a, a moment right now. And I mean, the mm. Tiger King this year has been hugely successful. I just wondered... Well, yeah, either where, where your craft speaks to that, or whether it does at all, um, and what you make of uh, that form of documentary making, and um, and what yeah, how that sits with I guess, ethical responsibilities and the type of stories that that you're telling. Yeah, I mean, so I haven't seen Tiger King, um, uh, but I understand it's very popular. Um, I don't know. I'm very like you know, they're absolutely not the films that I make. Um, 
I don't know, I can't tell, I get, sometimes I think that they are, you know, they're, they're, they're just entertainment, right? They're just a wild ride. Um, they're, they're just fun, right? They're, and people can like watch fun things, that's not an issue. And it's okay to have, you know, I'm not so highbrow that I'm dismissive of people that want to watch Tiger King, like whatever, like, you know, I've watched trash as well, we all do, but it is trash and it's not really, um, I don't know, I think it's, I can't, I don't know if people say documentaries having a moment, but then you, like what, are, what, what kind of documentary is having a moment? Like, is it literally just profile? Is it just like sensationalist kind of, um, you know, white knuckle ride, crime drama crime drama crime yeah sort of true crime whatever true crime yeah true crime um and then like profiles endless profiles of like football players and pop stars yeah. but um i mean I suppose... you know, that, that 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 seems to be dominating like video on demand and then but then you go to like film festivals and you see you know incredible um really interesting documentary and that doesn't seem to be hitting the mainstream, you know? That's sort of, so in, whilst, um, yeah, sort of innovative um, filmmaking. Well, I suppose, yeah. you know, I mean, the, the uh, BBC iPlayer and um, places are providing some sort of platform for that. And I know you've had um, films showcased on the BBC. So, I mean, is there a room for that, that uh, more, in, more expansive uh, sense of yeah. platforming different? Is there room for it? I hope so. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I guess I just, you know, I'm very torn when people say <clears throat> documentaries having a moment because I think certain documentaries are having a moment. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I don't know, it's hard. Um, I wonder if I might ask something to, to sort of go back to um, one of the things we started talking about where we were um, thinking about your work for uh, uh, in response to commissions uh, and your work yeah. on shorts and I mean these films are um, they involve quite a lot of labour and you indicated you know you, you, you convinced your producer and you have you're working yeah. uh, you go to Jamaica you're working with a budget um, I mean what do you see this as collaborative endeavours, I suppose, when you're making yeah, yeah, a film, yeah. and what role does collaboration play? We so often think of a, the, sen the director in the way that we think of an author as this... Yeah, as, yeah. Um, no, it's so different. It's so different. You know, um, filmmaking is like an, in is an intensely collaborative process. Um, and films are just, um, you know, a director's like a conductor, sort of, you know. Um, you're just there kind of adjusting things and you know, hopefully you have some vision for how the film is supposed to be, but you rely so heavily on um, not only the craft of those around you, but their ideas. And, um, you know, it's, it's truly a collaborative process. You know, um, you're working with like immensely talented people. I, yeah, I, th I mean, more talented than you are like all the time, for sure, because, you know, I know the feeling. <laughs> it, well, no, but, you know, your work, you're, they're all, they're the sort of true artists. I really feel that, you know, the composers, the editors, the cinematographers, they, they, you know, um, they're so highly skilled in what they do um, and have, you know, their own vision of like how the film should be. So you, you really have to negotiate that, you know. Um, yeah, it's definitely a shared, a totally shared process. Yeah. I mean, um, I, I guess one of the threads that's been running throughout this conversation, although we're talking about filmmaking and, um, mm. uh, and I guess a slightly different media, is uh, these questions of story, um, of research and history. Um, and so one of the questions that we've been asking all the contributors to a bit lit yeah. to talk about is um, this term literature. Uh, mm. kind of embedded there in the in the channel title. Um, I mean, what what does that term mean to you? Do you have any? Um, yeah, how how do you interpret that word and that concept? Oh my God, this, this is a really good question. Um, what does literature mean to me? I don't, oh, I I should ask. It's funny. I have a literature degree, right? So I have 
<laughs> I've got a BA in, in literature. I should be able to tell you. Um, well, I mean, yeah, as far as anybody ever can. <laughs> I think it's a... Yeah. It, it's, um, you know, it's, I want to say the primary form of storytelling, but I don't, do I mean that? You know, I think about different forms of storytelling all the way, all the time and the ways in which I, I really think a lot about um, why things are films and not, for example, um, novels. You know, why is this, why would I want to tell this as a fiction film and not um, written as a novel? Why would I choose to tell this as a documentary film and um, not as a written article, you know, like, so I'm, you know, I'm kind of constantly thinking about what makes uh, film different and therefore like what makes um, the like literature different. Um, it brings back to that question of form, I suppose, as well. Yeah, I, I kind of, you know, it's funny because I'm a filmmaker, but I, I do think literature is kind of um, superior because it has the one thing that film can never express and that's interiority you know, and that's kind of what it ultimately holds over film, right? That's its like knockout power. <laughs> um, it can harness interiority and that's what makes it special. In that case, what, what, what do you get from adapting something from the page to, to the film? Um, because you're also adding value and you're sort of telling that story in a different way with different forms. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, so, you know, Loosely put, films, uh, I don't know, because I, I, I think this is, this is a mantra that authors have as well, but, you know, we're, I'm always telling my students, for example, you know, like, show, don't tell, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, film has a very unique capacity to do that, I think, um, mm -hmm. to just present images, right, for an audience to read without any further, in, you know, inference. Mm. If that's the right word. Um, so. So it's a, it, and, and therefore it's a sort of challenge, I suppose, for the viewer because you're, well, as with as with all art forms, you know, you're kind of you're asking people to work at what it is they're yeah. seeing. And... Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Um, yeah, and and you know, in in basically how films work is it's the succession of images following each other, which like provide meaning mm. right so it's all about juxtaposition um the juxtaposition of images to yeah, create mm. meaning um i've completely lost what the question was oh no i mean we were just sort of talking about i guess literature and how it fills beyond different. the bounds of of i guess the written page and and, and it's yeah. The film. yeah it's really yeah, yeah 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 no, for me, like, I don't know, I don't know if this is at all true, but for me, like, literature is the kind of, like, primary, you know, it's a primary storytelling mode. Cool. Was yeah. there, um, I mean, was there anything else you wanted to um, bring up? I mean, I've covered the, the kind of, uh, the, the burning questions that I wanted to mm. raise. Is there anything before we sort of depart that you wanted to? No, um, I think that's everything. I'm really sorry I plugged my film so hard at the beginning. I feel really ashamed. <laughs> no, please do not feel ashamed. That's brilliant. No, we want, we want, um, love. we want, yeah, we want people to go watch the film. <laughs> oh, God. yeah. Um, no, I think that's everything. Thank you for having me. It's really oh, sweet. Thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure talking. Okay, cheers. Thank you. <laughs>